Hello and welcome to this edition of Icon. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing, and today we present a very special edition of Icon. As I had the interview with Mr. Valery Gergev and Mr. Eustace Franz, both are maestro conductors, and Mr. Gergev now is in Russia, and Mr. Franz is now in Germany. We had a very interesting discussion about their stories. When they came to China, how they were invited by the state leaders of China at the time, how they met and conducted, performed for Chinese people at the time, their impression of the country, their impression of fellow Chinese musicians, and also we had the opportunity to talk about their understanding and their insights about the profession, the art of conducting. Let's take a look. Eustace France is an internationally acclaimed pianist and conductor. He began playing piano when he was young and later studied conducting under Wilhelm Kempf. He came to worldwide attention in 1967 when he won a prize in an international music competition. France consistently manages to find unconventional ways of bringing classical music to a broad audience. In 1986, he launched the Schlossberg Holstein Music Festival and turned it into a major international music festival. France has played with and conducted orchestras around the world and is regarded as one of the most accomplished classical musicians of our time. Valery Gergiev is known for his charismatic stage presence and passionate performances. He is a representative of the Saint Petersburg School of Conducting. His debut at the Mariinsky Theater came in 1978 with Prokofiev's War and Peace. In 1996, he became the Mariinsky's artistic and general director, and under his guidance, it has become a major theater and concert complex. As one of the most sought-after conductors in the world, Gergiev maintains a demanding work schedule. His achievements in music have brought him numerous titles and awards. And with us online are Mr. Valery Gergiev and Mr. Justice Franz. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Very nice to talk to you.、Uh, we are very fine. Thank you. You both look great. But first of all, can you tell us where you are? I am now near Saint Petersburg, and、uh, very close to Baltic Sea. We have、um, many traditionally famous places, and one of the famous places is this one: Dmitri Shostakovich, a great composer of 20th century. Lived not far from here and composed much of his music here. Many great writers and poets and、uh, painters and composers and <coughs> artists performing. For example, Shalyapin or Rachmaninoff or Gorky. They used to come here. Quite famous place in the beginning of 20th century. And we make music here, which is fantastic feeling. Birds are. Singing, we like it. We exactly, like it. Mr. Mr. Franz, where are you, please? I am in Hamburg, in the middle of the town. And、uh, Valery spoke about these wonderful composers and artists who have、uh, worked in in Repino. I am here in an old house in Hamburg, and Johannes Brahms and also Gustav Mahler, but they have never lived here in the house, but they、uh, made music. And Valery was very often here. We had <clears throat> one time the whole Marinsky Theater. <laughs> They were sit- singing in the night at three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> It was a wonderful event, and all my neighbors <clears throat> got up at three o'clock. <laughs> but nobody called for the police. But in the next day, I got a bunch of flowers. <laughs> The garden with Mr. Franz looks great, and the the words behind you, Mr. Gergiev, weather looks great too. And more important than that, both of you look great. But I still need to ask you, gentlemen, the question: Under COVID-19, how are you doing?、Uh, we are doing、uh, 
so so in Russia. The problem continues for weeks, hopefully not months. We try to understand how a country like China being so big uh, fixed rather quickly this problem three, four months ago. Everyone globally was hearing that there is a problem with a virus in China. People did not realize that this problem will become global. Of course, Russia is not an exception. This is maybe not frightening the figures, but quite many people were infected and still quite many people are in hospitals. Mm. So many things should be done uh, to help them. Right. It's not over yet. I remember yeah. in the middle of February, we were sending our best wishes to the people of China. We did not realize that it would be so difficult for Italy. Or yeah. for, of course, we have to go through this. It's a, indeed a global challenge. And Mr. Mr. Franz, how are you doing? Well, um, of course, we could not travel in the last uh, six weeks. Unfortunately, normal concerts are not yet possible, but I think in about two weeks, we will not have any problems anymore, I hope. The experience of China has helped a lot to, for Germany that we overcome this crisis. Mm. So how has it been affecting the music scene? Well, uh, there, practically there was nothing. I'm a pianist, I also play the piano, and I could polish my technique wonderfully. But the <laughs> concerts are all closed and theaters are closed. But I can work at home. Mm. I mean, uh, so I used the time and that was very necessary. Okay. And uh, Valeri, <laughs> what did you do? Well, I never had in my life uh, opportunity to stay in one place <laughs> for about 10 weeks now. On the 10th of March, I was conducting general rehearsal with New York Philharmonic. On the 12th of March, uh, the general manager of New York Philharmonic, Deborah Borda, told me that the concerts have to be canceled. I also was about to start my week in Chicago with Chicago Symphony. Of course, this was canceled too. The rest of performances with the Metropolitan Opera were canceled. Two, I made a very quick decision and in about three hours after this news, I was in the airport to fly to Moscow. That was my last flight so far. You are talking to someone who makes 20 flights a month, more or less. When I am on tour, uh, we are changing city every day. Yeah. So there is every day there is a flight. Now for 70 days, I did not fly. And uh, as you know, Marinsky is a big company it's also quite global institution because every year we cover many countries maybe 20 25 or even 30 countries mm. now all this have to has to wait musicians are at home but mm. singers and dancers yesterday started to rehearse so this was a big moment for us yesterday i went to the marinsky and we make quite ambitious plans. We do not want to wait until September. We will perform in June, July, August. And the plan is to go inside Russia as far as Vladivostok, which will be quite close to you. Yeah. Beginning of October, I, I plan to be in Asia as well. Right. I mean, which starts in yeah. China. Yeah. And I'm really glad to hear that you, you're starting to plan the future. And we do sincerely hope life can be back to normal as soon as possible. But at the same time, I also understand a lot of the councils, a lot of musicians are now going online. Both of you are now invited to attend this global online concert organized by China Culture Promotion <coughs> Society. And can you tell us more about your decision to attend this concert? We will participate. For me, uh, to be online, uh, we have our own platform, marinsky.tv. It became the only public activity. From uh, March 19 till now, Marinsky.tv had about 65 million visitors. People uh, are interested. And uh, the time we're living now will be remembered that 
everyone was, so to say, displaced, one can even say misplaced, because our activity normally is in an opera house. Our activity is in concert hall. But even being at home or being <coughs> unable to perform and do what you do no normally, professionally, and what you love to do, we both, I think, will be part of this global concert and uh, represent our cultures. I think it's a good initiative. So right. I'm not unhappy uh, with the last uh, 10 weeks exactly because we never stopped being with our public. Yeah, no. it's, it's great to hear that. And what about you, Mr. Franz? I will play uh, piano and I will be conducting a little bit. I will also speak about solidarity. Music and nature are twins. And here I feel when I make a little pause I see these flowers, I see all this, what you see, the jasmine over there, and I, I'm so inspired, and especially here with the rhododendron, which is a wonderful plant, and also here, the roses. So, I must say, I'm in the middle of the town, but also here, I feel that somehow there is a protection of nature. I must also show you something which is maybe a little bit out of, of your, your imagination. But here I have little kids. You see here? Two very fast babies, chicken babies. And I'm happy that we have that in the middle of the town. Well, music is something which always is inspiring the protection of nature, of the environment. And I find also solidarity between mankind, but solidarity also between mankind and nature. This is what is good for our future. And I must say, the last weeks, I calmed down a little bit because I had to cancel 60 concerts. This is quite a lot for, <laughs> for me. But um, but I can say that I read more, I uh, augmented my repertoire, I looked into scores, I saw also sometimes friends, not so often, but sometimes, mm. and I wished I could have invited right. Valeri to come to Hamburg, but <laughs> this was not possible. I must say, yeah, this is amb ambiguous, you yeah. know, there is something of course, very sad, and something which brings us to a new in our feeling. Indeed. I mean, on the one hand, it's, uh, our life's been disrupted. On the other hand, it's great uh, to have both of you on this global concert that at least your music fans will have an access, will have an opportunity to see you perform again after so long, being disrupted by this COVID-19 virus. For both of you, this is not the first time that you're working with uh, Chinese colleagues and not your first time being connected with China. So let's talk about your China story. When was the first time you came to China? I was invited uh, in uh, 80. I remember people had practically all the same uniforms. They were blue or was it green? And they were on bicycles. I mean, can you imagine? Now you are the leading country, but, but uh, at that time, I must say, I never would have thought that China would be developed in such a short time. That was 40 years ago. So what was the mission about? Why did they invite you to China? What was it for? <laughs> there was the Germany opened up uh, uh, the first time a branch of a bank. And, <clears throat> and so uh, the Dresdner Bank, they asked me whether I could play something. 
So I played with a Chinese singer, wonderful singer, a lady. I made some German songs and some Chinese songs. And in the concert was Deng Xiaoping. And Deng Xiaoping, after the concert, I was honored to, to, to sit at his table. I saw the, for the first time Mao Tai. And Mao Tai, uh, uh, I did not know. And I must confess, it was quite difficult for me to drink that. And he saw that. And he saw and he said, oh, no, you must try it 10 times. And if you have tried it 10 times, you will love it. <laughs> and I thought he made a joke with me. But anyway, I was young and I was, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, I, yeah, I should do it. And I drank 10 times. I was completely drunk at the end and feeling very bad. But still, until today, Mao Tai is not my favorite drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Gergev, you must be familiar with the taste of Mao Tai, I believe. Yes, I am. And a few months ago, when I was in November in uh, Beijing, and also Guangzhou and Shanghai, we paid respect to this, I think, wonderful and uh, very special character drink. I think it's Mao also Tai, you mean? Yes, it's very, very <laughs> full of character. I yeah, say. I mean, it's, <laughs> a, it's a, one of the favorite drinks. You are very <laughs> polite. <laughs> <laughs> the character. When was your I first time, Mr. Gegev, that you came to China? My first time was in 1998. I came to perform in Shanghai and Beijing. I had a unique opportunity to go and see a great wall which took us some time from Beijing, as you know, but it was very memorable. Even my arrival in Shanghai for the first time was very memorable. Uh, Austrian Airlines lost my luggage. I was left without concert uh, right. frack or, or concert shoes or concert white tie and so on. And uh, I had to manage somehow to find a way in, in a hotel in Shanghai all these uh, Austrians. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they are a wonderful country and wonderful musical tradition, yes. but that time, Austrian Airlines did not help me very much, uh, which is okay. Then uh, I was in Beijing, and uh, the concert was in the Great Hall of the People, which is a huge, now totally renovated, and is a very, very majestic, uh, powerful feeling uh, to be inside. Even then it was. Uh, we performed for a big, big crowd, about 10,000 people in the hall, and the concert was <coughs> televised. So after first concert, I discovered that quite a lot more people, even globally, if mm. you can say globally, suddenly started to recognize my name. Uh, the concert was attended by President Dan Zemin, Mm. Unexpectedly, I had the opportunity to talk to him for about 40 minutes. A few hours before the concert, someone called me in my room and uh, told me that, Mr. Gergev, please uh, come down in one hour that we can take you to our chairman. Wow. I re my reply was, I really need every minute of a sleep because I have to conduct the program today. I was thinking that there was a chairman of the hotel, but it was a chairman of a communist party. Of, of the country. Of the country. <laughs> it was very, very interesting. Mm. The three things I remember yeah. were, were uh, first, I expressed my uh, being <clears throat> even huge impression the landing over Shanghai made on me before yeah. Shanghai International Airport. Now you have one more airport in Shanghai, That's but true. then it was an old one. And uh, I could see maybe 2,000 big cranes, which means the process of building, creating that was enormously big. I repeat, thousands of cranes. If you see in other cities, which are also big enough, uh, 20 cranes, that will make impression. If you right. see 100 cranes, 
but when you see thousands of big, big cranes, which means behind each big crane, there is a maybe a billion dollar project. That's true. In the 90s, China was pretty much under construction since 1980, Mr. Franz, when you first came to China. And I believe the China that you saw, Mr. Franz, in 1980, and the China that you saw, Mr. Yegev, in 1998, it's almost like two different countries because it's nearly after 20 years of Definitely. development. Yeah, and uh, yes. both of you had the opportunity to meet the state leaders at the time. And after that, both of you came back to China more often. Yeah, very often. Every year, at least one time, maybe two times. I believe you've also worked with many fellow Chinese musicians. What was your impression at the time about Chinese musicians and how that's been changing over the years? The first time I played a Beethoven concerto with the Central Symphony Orchestra, I had the feeling it was already very good, but it was not free. And uh, now the orchestra is really on a high standard. But at that time, I felt a little bit like on a boat, you know, when you first time you are maneuvering uh, a ship and uh, you think uh, oh i want to go now a little bit to the left or to the right first nothing happens and suddenly <laughs> much too much <laughs> it was so uh, interesting for me and but i must say it was very quickly that we could play very well together mm. mr gigaf so what is what is your impression of chinese musicians of the years of course, Lang Lan or Yu Jiawang are playing with me for the last quite many years. But what impresses me is how the country and the leadership of the country organize the process of creating new opera houses, new museums, new concert halls, architecturally always very interesting, not super traditional and how public was changing, how the discipline of everyone involved was raised to a high standard, how programs became very rich, how many films and film opera and ballet, including Chinese opera and Chinese ballet, including modern Chinese music, everything was organized with a unbelievable <clears throat> concentration focus and very, very successfully. I believe in the future of um, Chinese musicians because uh, about 10 months ago, to our surprise, that one of the very best talents of Tchaikovsky competition where millions of young people who compete in order to get into the final, 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 final. And what happened in the very final round one of gold medalists was a young unknown boy from China playing French horn. This cannot happen over sudden. It needs to be built and built, built into a very strong, very deeply rooted process of education. That's why I believe not only in individuals who time to time appear, great pianist or great violinist, I believe in a school and I believe in a policy which is clearly developed, not only population of China, but also this effectiveness and speed, high speed you go, uh, brings this confidence to me to say that many wonderful discoveries in the world of classical music or in the world of music in general <laughs> will be coming from China. I agree with Justus that 25 years ago or 20 years ago, maybe public was not so used to hear classical music, which is not a problem. Every country has its own history, but the way it was developed in the last 20 years is unbelievable. Indeed, you see a lot of concert halls being built in China. You're also seeing a lot of uh, young hopefuls popping up in international music scenes, including your yeah, competition, like you, like you mentioned. Know. But there is also one talk, one argument saying, well, classical music is still a genre of art from the West. 
for Chinese people is rather challenging for them to understand, to really grasp the essence of classical music because this is a Western art form. So what does it mean to Chinese musicians in this regard, Mr. Franz? I don't agree because when I go here to the, our university, I see in all different disciplines, but especially also in music, I see a lot of Chinese musicians and I hear uh, these young uh, musicians, first of all, they are very well prepared and dedicated and they really um, are on a very high standard. But most important for me is not the technical standard, but how engaged they are, how emotional, because you know, music is always the, an emotional communication. It is not only uh, Lang Lang, but as Valery said, thousands of wonderful young musicians who will make our world richer. They are coming from China. There is not at all a question whether music was composed in Europe or, or wherever. It is a question of understanding of young Chinese people are on a very high level and I admire you for that. Mm. Mr. Kekka? I don't think there is a border which, for example, children cannot cross. If six years old Chinese boy will attend performance of Nutcracker, I am thousand percent sure he will love it. What we all have to do that we can provide all the children of a global family with equal opportunities. Of course, if you are in Beijing or if you are in St. Petersburg or if you are in Hamburg, you will find a way to discover a lot about classical music, no matter which origins, uh, uh. German, Austrian or Russian or French or Chinese, it, it will be easy. But hundreds of millions of children globally do not have this luxury. Technology helps, but nothing can replace a live performance. I bring Peter and the Wolf, it's a Prokofiev, great Russian composer who composed this symphonic fairy tale. But if children hear in their own language this story which was created in Russia, they laugh and they react very emotionally. So all children, all citizens of the world, even below 10 years old, even five years old, are ready to be taken into this journey uh, in a world of <coughs> classical music. Yeah. I believe there is no border. But you made amazing trip in these 20, 25, 30 years in China. If you continue this speed, you will be not only a country with the most of classical music students or music schools globally, but also that the depth of this education and the depth of uh, discovering the musical world, global musical world, will be amazing. I mean, it's great to see all these younger generation, young hopefuls popping up all the time. But at the same time, they need to learn from masters, maestros like yourselves. Well, that was the first part of our interview and we had indeed a very interesting discussion about their experiences in China. Both of them came in very early years. Mr. Franz came the first time in 1980 and Mr. first came to China in 1998 and both of them were indeed very much impressed by how fast China has been developing over the years, not only in economy but also in art.